Hello, today is uh, Tuesday. It is the uh, 8th of May, 2012. Uh, the silver price is uh, in U.S. fiat currency, 29.43 as of almost 1.30 p.m. Eastern time, down about 2%. And this was obviously to be expected when the list of all commodities had that of the margin call set up so that you can't have as much leverage and Quite frankly, I've said this before in uh, many other different videos, I find that to be a very toxic way of uh, making markets move in uh, the form of leverage, derivatives, and all of those uh, other fancy financial instruments that's currently going on within this market. So we had this first test of uh, 30 had a bounce, three days, finding it a support, and today's a day it dropped below. And again, that was to be expected. And that's the case with uh, really all of the commodities. Let's take a look at GLD, which is the ETF for the uh, gold market. This is what it looked like in the morning. And uh, when you see something like this, you look at all of these gap opens, and, well, it, it trades a lot outside of the uh, New York time frames because this is from... 9.30 a.m. New York time to 4 o'clock p.m. And the gaps is everything that happens in between. And quite frankly, I have talked about this type of chart. Really, it's a pet peeve of mine. So with that being the case, I'm going to take a look at a lot more charts within this uh, kind of uh, nature. So what I did is I want to take a look at the monthly chart of silver. But only even months, that's months 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12, or February, April, June, August, October, and December, and I just don't want to count all of the other ones, and quite frankly, you're going to get a very similar kind of looking chart. It's got a high of 49.81, and uh, the low of uh, 405 going back to uh, well, the 1990s. So I can even go a little bit further than that. So instead of doing even months, I thought, you know what, let's just do, how about five days on and, and two days off, as of uh, yesterday anyway, because that's what I made this uh, chart for it. Oh, you have this significant gap, so a couple months where the price action went in just a, a little bit higher. I could even do random charts, which is what I decided to do. I got my computer to... Uh, with every month, uh, put a random number variable between 1 and 2. If it's a 2, I want to count it. If it's a 1, I didn't want to count it. So that's what this one looks like. Now it's got a high of 4809, but whatever. It didn't count because it didn't want to. The high of 4981. So instead of doing random and stuff like that, now what I want to do is the 100 most volatile months silver has had since 1968. So I sorted out the all the months going back, and I'm only counting the top 100. So the 100th most volatile month for silver is 17.4%. And that... Uh, the highest total is 169%, because that's the uh, levels that we end up having. The last time that Silver's had a top 100 volatile month was the month of January, and the price then was 33.24. On here, it says volatility tiny. Now, the way this thing calculates is it takes the 100 periods within it, and then it takes a look at the last three periods. Actually, not the last three. The three beforehand. So, not, not last three, not including the current one. And then it says, okay, what is the volatility of this compared to everything else? And in this case, it's tiny. So, what this is telling us is that, well, at least these three periods in here, it's nowhere near as volatile as the way it once was. And in this time frame of 1979, 80, 81, and all this type of stuff, there was, in fact, 11 consecutive months that made the uh, highest volatile moves because back in 79, 80, things were just going rampant. There was a long sideways consolidation, but you really don't see that within this because throughout the entire 1990s, and the early 2000s, it was such an unvolatile moving uh, chart as it was stabilizing between the 4, 5, 
six uh, fiat dollar range. So I could even do the 100 least volatile that I did. So therefore, the least volatile is, uh, well, this is what it looks like, really, uh, yeah, not uh, nothing too exciting. But it says the volatility is extreme. And all that's telling us is that the last three uh, periods uh, happen to be much more volatile than all the other ones. So I wouldn't lead too much into it. But the last time we've had an unvolatile month would take us back to uh, month ending June of 2003. So that'll be it for the least volatile. Let's do the most volatile of the daily time frame. So this is going back to 2008, only counting the top 100. The last time that we've had a volatile 100, top 100 day was on the day of February the 29th, 2012. And well, the rate range is from 6.2%, which is the 100th most volatile day since then, and the most volatile day was 31.6%. Again, 08, 09, a lot of uh, volatility. The movements from here, this was the breakout point in 18. Now, there's no dates on here. The May the 7th is uh, 2010, March 15th is 2011, just uh, so you know that. But there was no volatility to make us get up to that uh, 24. So what that told us is the breakout came on low volatility. And from this point here to it here, there's 10 periods. There was only 10 volatile days throughout the entire bull market of the 10-month run that occurred from the, uh, of course, August of 2010 into 2011. Since then, there's been about uh, 25 or so, 30 days, that uh, has been volatile, most of them, of course, in that of a red candle. The volatility says tidy. So that tells us that the uh, these three days in here is really nothing or lower compared to what the uh, rest of the days happen to be. As far as the weekly chart, this goes back to the, I will say the early 2000s. There has been uh, the 100th most volatile week was 9.6%. And the most volatile week was 45.6%. Uh, so from the uh, breakout point, there was uh, eight weeks that was uh, in the volatile area. And then from the correction, I'm just quickly counting in my head. It looks like about 14 or so, 15 from this point in here. Volatility again tiny, which means that uh, things aren't as wild or going as crazy as they uh, once were. Next up, uh, we're going to be moving this on to the Dow Jones, but before we do, I'm going to go back to the regular silver chart. So all this stuff that has happened, it's been light movement, so why this is the case, you know, I really don't know because... For example, if you don't know where something is, how do you find it? And the answer is you find it. If you don't know where your keys are, you got to find it. If you don't know where your code is, you got to find it. And you can change the where to all of the questions, the five W's, uh, the what, why, where, when. So why is this, why is it so involved? Well, you got to find it. Maybe you might not find the answer. But they are not crashing the market. Maybe they're stopping the buying force from coming into play. I really can't state. But let's go back to the volatility. We've done silver. I'm going to show you now the Dow Jones. This is going back to... I got monthly data going back to 1928. And therefore, most of the days happens in those earlier parts, 1929, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Well, really, the first half of the chart is all the way up to 37. I stated that in silver, there were 11 consecutive months that uh, were in play. Here, it was higher. And, well, I, I got the data right in front of me now. There is 15 straight months from September of 1931 to November of 1932 that qualified for the most volatile 100 month in Dow Jones history, of course, going back to 28. And 34 of a span of 41 months from September of 1930 
to January of 34 are included on this list. Now, there's 100 periods on this chart, which means 34% of the silver volatility going back roughly the last 85 years, probably even over 100 years, includes just a that short, uh, less than four-year period. So that's pretty remarkable, to say the least. So the volatility that we once had is uh, not there. And then we had the huge markets falling. They, they didn't add stimulus and stuff, and that's kept the market afloat, to say the least. And uh, just moving on within this, the uh, 2008 panic, it was only, there were six or seven months that made this list. And from September of 08 to March of 09 being that list, with December not making it, and there have been four on this list uh, uh, post the lows, and that is July of 2009, March of 2010, and August and October of 2011. Volatility is tiny because, well, quite frankly, the moves that occurred back then is much, much grander than the ones that we have today. Finally, let's finish this off with gold. And I can go back to 1968 for gold. And again, the most 100 volatile months, notice again, the volatility is tiny. Just comparing the 100 periods, it happens to show what do these three periods state compared to all of the ones that happened before. And it's, it's a nice looking chart. I mean, you can do a, a trend analysis where you can say, well, you had this downtrend and now it's been switched up to this uptrend. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to end today's video at uh, that, and thank you for tuning in, and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.